Hmm. Last thing we have to talk about with shoulder blades and then we're done here. Shoulder blade cues. Pull your shoulder blades down and back. We've heard this so many times. How do we cue shoulder blades? How do you cue shoulder blades? What's the, the wrong way to cue shoulder blades? What's the best way to cue shoulder blades? Is there a way to cue shoulder blades? I don't like this question at all. I so don't. I'm just going to ask you, and I feel like I have answered this a little bit in an older podcast, maybe that first one we did on shoulders. So I do want to hear your answer because I, I honestly want to hear your answer. Like I, I, need, I need to learn something. No, you don't. Uh, you know everything. But look, I, I do think people say, pull your shoulder blades down and back, put it in your opposite back pocket. And that can become a problem as well, because then you but just get do, stuck there. What's the need for that? Is that because they feel like the person is in a slumped posture or anterior tipped, right? They got the shoulder blade tipping forward, winging maybe in the back. So is that why it's so popular to say, let's teach people to pinch down and back? It has to be. I mean, that, like we said, with our superior impingement being a major problem, and the one of the major pieces of that is that the shoulder blade is tilted up and forward. And I also have a problem with patients or doctors or saying, your shoulder blades are tilted up and forward. Your shoulder blades are up in your ears. If you're saying that to everybody, you're, you're wrong at some point. You know what I mean? But I do think going back to devil's advocate, like why people would say pull your shoulders down and back would be because they think they're up and in. They've got this up and narrow thing, so you got to pull them down and back. However, you're not a guard at Buckminster Palace. So I don't know that that's necessarily the right way. I think, say particularly, and again, this might be for more like a deconditioned patient. We're talking about like my aunt, you know, who just needs to feel some posterior shoulder activation a little bit. And I don't even like saying posterior shoulder activation, mm -hmm. but if you can give it to a patient, you have to know that the buff CrossFit dude that comes in, who's doing his X band crosses can feel the back of his shoulders fine. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, if they're doing Olympic lifts, their shoulder blades need to do all sorts of things and all sorts of angles. But I'm talking about perhaps a mostly deconditioned patient who just needs to sense the back of their shoulders. And perhaps if they're doing some rows or they're doing some sort of, let's just say shoulder exercises, that their shoulders do start to go up. And instead of saying, pull your, this is, the, this is my cue, this is the final answer for it all. Shoulders will go up. I'll say, shrug your shoulders even higher up. Because if I immediately tell them to shrug their shoulders down, they're like, I can't bring them down. I'm like, let them go all the way up. Bring them up even higher go up, go up, go up, go up. Okay, now let's bring them all the way down. And so I just let them go all the way up because they don't even know how high up they are, to be honest. And so I'll say, yeah, bring them up even higher. Let's go all the way into it so you can really figure out where you are to then get out of it. That's the only one that I've really found that's been as successful for me at all. Hmm. And it also has to do with a pretty deconditioned patient. I think uh, the strategy has to match the spine and rib cage. A lot. So I was thinking of a scenario where I would do it more. And that would be a lot of times you can get more of an abducted anteriorly tipped like scapula on hyper kyphotic individuals. So very, very kyphotic thoracic spine. So it pushes those shoulder, bl shoulder blades up and over. And in, in their case, the cue of down and back or a little bit of scapular adduction or you know what I mean pulling them towards the back pockets matches up with the desirable spinal movement which would be thoracic extension so sure. in that case that could be a decent strategy I still might do something more of like if you know if they're not 95 years old but I might put them in a deep squat like by by putting them on a short stair or something like that and then do some banded stuff from that position so you can uh you can fire that from that position a little bit better or i might do that actually for the opposite which would be uh the flat spined individuals i would put them in that position so you can sure. give them thoracic flexion while they can turn on scapular adduction mm. because then the then the strategy is flipped right you need somebody to you see the shoulder blades are tipped forward and you need to pull them down and back but if you do that on a flat T-spined individual, the strategy doesn't match up because you're just forcing them into more thoracic extension or rib cage elevation in the front. The strategy, that's where you're going to get a Buckingham Palace soldier with headaches, right? 
But if you, if, the, if you can get that adduction on a person who's hyperkyphotic, then those two match up. In that case, I think it's more applicable. But I kind of messed that up before. But if I had the second yeah. person with an with a extended spine, yep. I want to put them in thoracic flexion and then try to maybe get that, that scapular adduction or down and back. And you, that is, you know, that is hard. It's not that easy. is hard to do to try to feel those muscles in thoracic flexion. If you're not somebody that naturally recruits them in that pattern, right. because what happens, you pull the shoulders together and down or down and back your chest moves forward and your head a lot of times. And just tell me how good you feel in that position. And then like Charlie Weingroff says, like name a sport where you ever are in that position besides, besides bench press, competitive powerlifting. Right. So that doesn't do much for you. So again, just matching the spinal movement up with the requirement of the, the scapular movement, I think is how I would attack that question. I think that's a wonderful way to finish this episode, Bobby. And then you said you didn't have a good answer for it. And that's a freaking, I thought that was masterfully done, sir. Masterfully done. Talk for the foreign language don't get it uh thank y'all for listening again hit the like button on youtube tell your friends and uh go listen to dr offenberger's episode because we referenced it 12 times and now you got to listen to it if you haven't listened to it uh peace see ya bye